The thing I was most looking forward to after getting across the Continental Divide in the Rockies was um, was the flatlands. You know, you pretty much split Canada in thirds: the mountains, the flatlands, the prairies, and then the lakes and the trees. And that middle section, I always thought I would get there and I would fly. <laughs> the reality couldn't have been more different. We picked up a significant headwind uh, for a couple of days. That created a, a bit of a headache, to say the least, because um, it put us back by at one point something like 185 miles. And that's a considerable distance uh, to regain, especially when uh, we're under very tight schedules. Mark's speed was halved from the start of that and he had three, maybe even four was it, solid days of strong headwinds that he was battling against. I mean that wind was unbelievable. If you're riding 16 hours a day into an unrelenting headwind, there's no recovery. You know, my legs felt absolutely stripped. He's really starting to run the wire. This week you could see it in his emotions. A couple of very small things that, you know, he'd be able to control if he was a bit more rested and kind of recovered. Now, emotionally, he's been fragile at occasions this week. And he definitely is pushing himself beyond whatever he's pushed before. Physically, he's got a few little niggles. His feet have been, have been a constant management throughout this whole stage, but he's, he's not too bad once he's on the bike. Ultimately, Mark had to battle through the winds, and at the same time, I was very, very quickly trying to find alternative routes uh, that we could use the sort of uh, the wind to our best advantage, and that meant sort of constantly monitoring the weather, um, constantly looking at the routes, and, and, and as a consequence of that, we made a significant change, which in essence uh, tied in quite nicely to the change of the winds. Trying to make the most of good conditions and getting some of those extra miles in, so. Well, yesterday he did 245, the two days before he did 270 sort of miles, so he regained 60 miles within two days. You know, it switched around quite nicely and I've ended up having a much faster uh, finish to the week and I have made up some of those lost miles. We're about 100 to 120 miles behind now. That fits in nicely to the rest of Stage 3 programme and believe it or not, we're still on track for the same flight that we booked uh, months and months ago. The scenery has changed a lot this week. All the mountains in Canada at the beginning of the week and then it's all gone through to the plains of Canada. It was all just big wheat fields and oil wells as far as, you could, as the eye could see with very, very little in between. Across the border into the US, these great big wheat fields just continued the whole way down. Farms dotted everywhere. The biggest change crossing into the US from Canada is there was immediately better roads. Very easy border crossing into the US. I've left sort of the wilderness of the north. I've come into farmland, prairie, towns, villages. And with that has come a huge increase in the amount of roadside support. You know, most days people come out and ride with me, even if it's for a couple of miles. People standing out with roadside banners. I'm blown away and, and really grateful for the support. Within individual days, you have these incredible battles and yet, Suddenly you reach milestones like three quarters of the way around the world and you look back and you go, wow, okay, well, we're, we're really getting there. You know, I can already hear my team here and back in the UK starting to talk about the finish and that's, that's the first time that I get a sense of, okay, you know, our focus is really about the build up to the finish now. There's a huge amount of unsung heroes um, operating around me um, and they, you know, they, they are supporting Mark to the absolute maximum, working incredibly hard, long hours. Uh, to keep his bike going, to keep the food coming in, the shopping, making sure they've got comms on all the time. Comms has been a bit of a problem this week, um, especially since I'm driving the media vehicle and I've got the media team in there trying to upload information to the social media platforms. So for me it's a case of trying to make sure that if we're in a bad comms position where we don't have much reception, um, and we don't have our Wi-Fi hotspots not working, where can we go to get comms? And then it's trying to fit that in around cooking, logistics, shopping and all the rest of it. So sometimes you might have to go on ahead for 20 minutes or so or off the beaten track and find more comms and fit everything else in around that. The support team this week have been great. We do sometimes find that when people are um, facing adversity that they do pull together and they pull together well and that's where their strength is shown. I think that we've all been very strong this week while we've been facing the difficulties and especially as Mark's been facing difficulties on the road. The conversations I'm having now is about what does that last stage four look like and the big thing that I'm kind of working with people behind the scenes is I just want to keep that as quiet as possible and at the moment he really just needs to focus with ticking over his legs. My concern is, is that that stage four gets too busy with lots of people coming in and out and changes and I just don't want change. I want us to stay as our bubble, stay as routine and keep things as consistent as possible until literally it's the day that he rides into Paris.